Hello, and welcome to week three. This week we're going to discuss chapter two of the textbook, and that's going to be platforms and player modes. Uh, the platform is the hardware system wh which you play the game on. So that would be the arcade, the computer, the console. Um, and we're going to discuss each of those. <clears throat> I have notes written down here, and I would suggest you copy my notes into your own notebook, and then you'll have them for when you need to take a test. Because anything I write down is whatever's going to probably be on the test. So if you have it all written down, then you won't have to be searching through your textbook or mem doing too much memorizing, uh, and you'll be able to get through the test a lot quicker. So uh, the first platform that we'll talk about is an arcade. Arcades um, have three different entities that are developed that are used to develop the game. The first one is the hardware manufacturer. Now that is the platform, right? The hardware manufacturer makes the platform that the game is going to be played on. And then you have the game developer, and only a single game can go on to an arcade platform. So you have a game developer that will design a specific game, create a specific game for the the platform, the arcade, the single arcade platform. Um, and then you have the venue operator. That is the person who either purchases the um, arcade game or they might rent the arcade game and then pay the developer, the manufacturer, um, slowly, monthly rent. But they collect, you know, the money that goes into the arcade game and that's how they make their money. Um, arcade games are always very quick play. They're easy to walk up to, figure out how to play. You don't have a lot of instructions to read. Um, you know, there might be a little bit, a little thing showing, a video showing on the screen, what the game is about. Um, so you can't take a lot of time to figure out the game. Um, they also want you to, you know, play the game and leave and go play another game or play the game again and have to keep putting your quarters in or maybe it's not quarters anymore but put your more money in so they're very quick play um, and the controls are usually very simple they either have buttons or maybe a joystick um, the arcade games are usually one to two player uh, the first four player game was Gauntlet um, and that was a four-player game in the 80s, I believe it came out. Um, but most uh, arcade games are single-player or multiplayer with just two players. And you usually go up and you either push a button for one player, push another button for two players. You each have your own controls. It's very simple to play, very quick play. Okay, next we'll talk about consoles. So consoles have a hardware manufacturer that creates the platform and very often, most of the time, the game developer is part of the same company that the manufacturer is. So you'll have a develop developer uh, group inside the company that creates the platform. Um, that makes the games proprietary, what we call proprietary, so the manufacturer has complete control over what games are developed for their console. Um, console games you can play for hours and hours and hours. They can be much more complicated. They often have um, tutorials that teach you how to use the controls. The controls are also much more complicated. Um, you have a lot more uh, screen real estate, more things that you can do in the game. Uh, your controllers are usually a, you have a controller that most controllers look the same. Um, they've been, um, they've been, they, they try to keep them the same. So play a game on one console and then you play a game on another console, you're going to know how to pick up those controls and use them. So they've generalized the controls that way. Uh, you might have a joystick, you might have motion control, um, the Wii, and there's other motion controls that um, are other ways, you know, interesting ways to control your games. Um, but usually you have a controller that you hold in your hands. Next we have computer. Computer games 
uh, anyone can create a game for a computer. So we call that non-proprietary. Although when you create, when you develop a game for a computer, you have to make sure that you always give minimum hardware specifications for that game so that people who buy the game know what they minimally have to have on their computer, like the, um, the sound card and the graphics card and the amount of memory, um, maybe the speed of the computer. Uh, you need to give those minimum specifications that the game is going to work on. Um, computer games usually use a mouse and a keyboard. You can connect a controller to them, but mouse and keyboard is the preferred way to play. And a lot of people like that because you're not having to learn all the buttons on the controller and your hand, with your hands. It's very easy to use a mouse and keyboard. We all know how to use them. Um, computers are very fast and have very high graphics resolutions. Um, so it's a great it's a great uh, platform to play on. Um, and then we have online. Online um, is when you actually have a computer game um, system, either a computer or console connected to the internet. Um, there's two different types of online um, um, ways that you can have your game set up. Um, there's peer-to-peer, -peer, which we don't really do much anymore, which is where each computer is literally connected to every other computer and it talks directly through the internet to the computer. Uh, client server is the way that we usually go. There's a server um, and each computer is connected or console is connected via the internet to that server. All the information goes through the server first and then gets passed to the other um, consoles or, or computers where the people are playing the games. Okay, then we have handheld. Handheld are similar to consoles, but they're much smaller. Uh, they can be taken anywhere with you. Um, they have a smaller screen, they have less memory, um, and they have smaller controls. So while um, they're convenient because you can take them with you, they do have less screen real estate. The controls are smaller. So, um, you know, you can't put as much on the screen. You can't do as much. Some, you have to often go from screen to screen, um, breaking up the, the game a bit, uh, breaking up the immersion of the game. When the DS came out, the whole point was it had that double screen. So you'd have the you'd have the game playing up here, and then on the second screen, you'd have maybe your menus where you can do actions. So it didn't take away from what was happening in the game. Um, mobile is either phones or tablets, and they have a very different type of um, control. They have touch screens. Um, where you just touch the screen so when you're designing a game you're creating it a lot differently. You can get, get controllers for mobile games from for your mobile systems but usually people like to use the touch screens. Sometimes on a game they'll put controls um, that you use your thumb to maybe move and turn that they embed into the into the touch screen um, but it's still touch screen so it's a whole different type of interaction between the player and the game. Um, other platforms, obviously, we have non-electronic games. Um, we have tabletop games, board games, card games, etc. These are all um, the the platform is different for all of them, right? They're they're non-electronic, but like a tabletop game, you might have a pencil and paper, you know, the or maybe some dice. Um, board games, you have a board, you have pieces that you move around the board, you have a spinner or dice or, you know, then card games, you have cards. So the um, platform, the place that you play the game, looks different for each of these non-electronic games as well. Okay, next we're going to talk about time intervals. Time intervals are... Um, things that we can use to control the pace of the game. Okay, they control the pace of the game, time intervals. Now we're not talking about time in games. We're not talking about how time works in games. We will talk about that in another chapter. This is called a time interval, control, controls the, the, the pace of the game. 
um, we have three of them. We have turn-based. Okay, turn-based games are where players uh, take turns and you have as much time as you want to take your turn. So if you're playing chess with a friend, you can sit there and think about your next move forever and ever and ever until your friend yells at you maybe, but chess, they tend to have a lot of um, patience. So um, turn-based games, there are a lot of turn-based games in online games um, where you take a, you take a turn you have as much time as you need to take your turn, and then you pass your turn on uh, to the other player. They take their turn, they do what they need to do, and then you take your turn again. Um, we have things like turn-based strategy games. You set everything up as you're taking your turn, and then you, you go, and then the other player goes. <clears throat> so turn-based games can take a long time to play. Okay, next we have... Um, Real-time. Real-time games, all the action is hap happening at once. There are no turns. So all the players are taking their actions at the same time. These are very fast-paced games. Uh, they go very quickly. Um, so you can see that the, that the pace of the game is fast, right? A turn-based game, the pace of the game is slow. A real-time game, the pace is fast. Uh, last, we have what's called time-limited. This is a turn-based game that you can speed up just a bit. What it is is players take turns, but they have a certain amount of time to complete their turn. So if you've ever seen a chess game where they have a timer, sometimes in chess tournaments they have a timer, and the players have to take their turn before the timer comes off, then they hit the timer to reset it for the next player. So it allows for a slower pace but it speeds it up just a bit it makes sure that you're going to complete the game in a certain amount of time so that is time limited so these are the three time intervals next we're going to talk about player modes player modes cor correlate to the number of people who play the game and so if it's a if it's a single player game then the player mode is single player so obviously single player is uh, one person playing the game so you'll, you'll always have that on, usually in an arcade game, you can't have up to two. Certainly in a handheld, that's single player. Um, I suppose you can connect, sometimes you can connect your handheld games to other handheld games um, via Bluetooth or sometimes online and play with other people, but those are usually single player. Then we have two player, that's where two players are playing together usually on the same console system. Uh, you're both playing at the same time. You might be playing against each other. But two people, two human people, actually it could be you playing against uh, a non-player character. You playing against the computer. That's also a two-player game. Then we have what's called local multiplayer. Local, mul local multiplayer specifically means multiple players are are on a single platform. So if you take four people and you're all playing on a single console, you have four controllers hooked up to that one console and you have a split screen for four four areas on the screen, that is local multiplayer. Okay, local, um, it's really important that you're on a single platform to define that. That's opposed to, say, LAN-based multiplayer. LAN-based is, LAN stands for Local Area Network. That's where you have several consoles, you're all in a room together, you've either hooked them up via um, wires or maybe Bluetooth, you're not on the internet, okay? You are on a local area network and you're, a bunch of people are playing um, the games together. So you maybe each have your own computer on a local area network or your own console, um, but you're all connected, not on the internet. Uh, next we have online multiplayer. That is online connected via the internet. Okay, so online multiplayer where you can have many, many, many people, thousands of people playing the same game at the same time. You're all connected via the internet and that's what makes it online. Um, and then finally we have what's called player versus player with, or PVP. That is specifically two players uh, competing against each other like in an MMO 
or I know I mentioned that two players uh, can either be uh, two people or you against the computer, but PvP player versus player means that specifically two players are playing against each other. And that is the end of the lecture. This is a very short chapter. Um, I have a whole bunch of other videos I'd like you to watch that are all listed. And um, then you have your homework assignment to do, which will be due on Sunday at midnight. Uh, so quick, that was just a quick chapter. Um, the next chapter is also going to be pretty quick. And then uh, we'll get more into some nitty gritties. So have a great week, and I'll um, see you next week. And if you have any questions, please email me. And don't forget, I have um, office hours on Thursdays from 4 to 5.